Hi guys and welcome back to another video for PSO Blueburst. In today's video we're going to continue the series of lore videos for PSO where we're going to talk about the Principality Government and Red Ring Rico. Hi everyone welcome back to another video for Fantasy Star Online Blueburst. Um, this is going to continue the series of lore videos for PSO where we talk about all the different, different facets of PSO and all the different events that happen in the story. So last video was the first in the series, so if you missed that, we talked about the Pioneer Project and how we actually got to Raggle in the first place. In today's video, we're going to focus on some of the intricacies of Pioneer 2, so things like the Principality Government. We're also going to talk about um, Red Ring Rico as well. So first of all, let's talk about the government. So on board Pioneer 2, there is actually a, a government structure in place to an extent. The government is primarily composed of figures from originally from Coral. But there is a dedicated representative on Pioneer 2 called Colin Tyrell, who is better known to everyone as Principal Tyrell. So on board Pioneer 2, there is the Principal's Office. When you come up here, there are a few people up here. So you have a few, these are generally just aides for the Principal who are like scientific aides who are feeding back the information of what's going on on the surface. This NPC here we can mostly ignore. She, she's called Momoka and she is mainly connected to Blue Burst, so in the context of episode 1 we don't really need to speak to her. She gives you what are called government quests in Blue Burst, but they are essentially just the story of what happens in episode 1 anyway, so we don't need to cover as an actual character. And we have Colin Tyrell, so Principal Tyrell, who for all intents and purposes is the head of Pioneer 2. And then we have his secretary Irene, who he gives all the information to and you get all your information about what's going on from. So it doesn't really tell you much here at the moment, and that's because we're not actually in a government quest. Um, now Tyrell basically oversees the sort of day-to-day -day running of Pioneer 2 and orchestrates what's going on with the rescue efforts to find out what happened to Pioneer 1. His secretary obviously is the one who's responsible for feeding that all onto you. And then, as a member of the Hunters Guild, you're responsible for going down to the surface and figuring out what's actually happened. Now, when you first get this information from Tyrell, when the game first starts, it sounds like just a, a, a fairly fair request that he just wants you to go and investigate what happens to what's happened to the rest of Pioneer One. However, he does kind of have an ulterior motive. So, there was actually a hunter on board Pioneer One who was also a celebrated scientist called Rico Tyrell. And the surname is no coincidence. Um, Rico Tyrell is Colin Tyrell's daughter. And she is better known as a legendary hunter called Red Ring Rico because of the outfit that she wears and the fact that she always wears like a red bracelet on her, on her wrist. So she's a celebrated hunter and she was on board Pioneer One. So obviously Tyrell has this kind of ulterior motive in that yes, he wants to find out if everyone on Pioneer One is okay, but he's also very concerned about his daughter as well. So he has actually a personal connection to it as well. It's only later in the game that he really reveals to you that he does also have this other part to his request as well. So initially he basically wants you to hunt for any signs of life of Pioneer 1 and he hopes that by doing that you might stumble across Red Ring Rico as well. But later on he tells you more forthrightly that he does want you to try and find Rico and find out what happened to her. So next up let's talk a bit more about Rico herself. And to do that we need to go back down to Raggle. So on your first trip down to Raggle the first place you'll come to will be the forest. Um, this is an area of the planet called Lupus Silver, and it's essentially a, a verdant forest that Pioneer One have selected as a place to start expanding residential areas on. Um, it's also where they start to build the central dome as well. And again, like I covered in the last video, this is all built from parts left over from the disassembly of Pioneer One. Now, what you will find as a hunter when you first come to the forest is that there are several of these on the floor, and these are little message capsules. Now these, they can give you various different information, they can give you lore tidbits, they can give you information on how to defeat enemies, but the common theme among them all is that they are all messages left by Red Young Rico, and this is essentially how PSO tells you the story of Episode 1. So a lot of things in the story are not explicitly told to you. Um, you get very little information from Pioneer 2 because they don't really know too much about what's going on on the surface anyway, they know what you feed back to them because you're the one actually going down and doing the recon. 
Um, a lot of the information about the planet and what actually happened comes from these message capsules. And as you go through the game, you will build up this picture of what has actually happened. So this is the very first one that you get to. Uh, I'm just going to read through it just to get an idea of what's actually happening. Ah, testing, testing. <clears throat> I'm Rico, Rico Tyrell. I'm a hunter. This capsule is for anyone who's come here looking for me. I hope this helps you. I don't know who you are, but you must know that there's something unusual about Ragol. This is important. Pay attention to everything around you if you want to survive. So a little bit of an ominous message really. So she straight away is telling you that there's something not right with this planet. Uh, and telling you that you need to keep your wits about you. And as you progress through the forest, you will find more and more of these capsules. Some of them will just be hints on how to defeat different enemies, but there are quite a few that will actually build on the story as well. So as you progress through different areas of Ragol, you will keep finding these capsules. They're not just confined to the forest. Uh, and this allows you to basically... They're almost like little pins that show you where Rico has been. So it's almost like, she, almost like she's leaving you this little trail of, of crumbs to sort of invite you to where she's been going. So you essentially just, when you run through, you just want to look out for these capsules and just follow them. And these will be your primary way of picking up the story in PSO. But sometimes, like I've mentioned, sometimes it will be just a, a hint on how to defeat enemies. So boomers, I don't like their weird faces. Be careful, you don't want to get surrounded by them. So there she is just telling you a basic tip about how to fight some of the enemies in Ragol. So the first time that Rico gives you any idea that something's not quite right on Ragol is with this message here. So she says, what made the animals become so violent all of a sudden? They weren't before. They were very quiet and friendly. There must be some cause, I'll find it. I know I'm a fool, this won't make me any richer. Perhaps that's why I'm exalted by them, Redring Rico, haha. <laughs> but I'm not really the great hunter citizens say I am. They needed a hero, and I just happened to fill that position. So Rico's obviously a very confident kind of character. Um, however, it's interesting that she mentions that the animals were very sort of docile and friendly. Um, from what we've seen so far, obviously that is not the case anymore. Everything is trying to kill you. So something has changed on Ragol. And she's trying to figure out obviously what has happened and why the animals have become aggressive all of a sudden. You can see obviously that Pioneer 1 had started to set up some parts of the colony. So these doors, for example, are obviously man-made ones. Um, this is because this was all going to be like a residential complex. Uh, however, it's clear that a lot of the development didn't happen, assuming because the enemies here got violent. You can see now you know, the enemies are certainly not friendly now. So something has obviously changed on Ragol to make all the native enemies become aggressive, all the native life forms become aggressive. And Rico has obviously taken it upon herself to try and figure out what has actually caused that. And again, here coming through the forest a little bit further, we find this next message and from this, you can start to build up a picture that something bad has happened on Ragol. Wow, bodies of dead animals. We hunters sometimes use firearms, but this... They were killed by firearms that are much stronger than ours. So something has killed a lot of the, anim a lot of the animals, but they've, they've used something that is far stronger than anything a hunter would use. So it starts to beg the question now, what would have what caused this? Why are all the animals dead here? Why are the remaining animals become aggressive? Nothing's kind of adding up at this point. A disaster occurred. Things were shaking, then something broke through the surface. And then it exploded in the central dome. I don't know what to say. For seven years, we've tried to adjust and improve the environment. Remember that time frame. What was it? Was it related to the accidents we've had recently? So this is a very interesting message because first of all, she mentions that they've tried to adjust the environment for seven years. Now we know that Pioneer 2 arrived at Ragol seven years after Pioneer 1, which coincides perfectly with that huge explosion. So is it at this point, well, Pioneer 1 experimenting with adjusting the environment on Ragol, something has gone horribly wrong and caused this explosion? That's kind of where it sounds like at this point and the time frames do marry up. 
However, does that explain all the dead animals? Um, at this point, you just don't know. You're kind of theory crafting at this point. And that's basically what Rico is doing at this point as well. She's trying to figure out what has actually happened on this planet. So using the uh, free camera infinity, we can actually get a good look at the central dome. So you can see here, this is like the main structure of the central dome. Um, we seem to have a few sort of tower blocks built into it. And there is this large structure here. However, you can see that the, the roof is actually quite extensively damaged on it. There is a lot of damage to the, like, the outer part of it. You can see it's all cracked. So something has exploded here. You can also see that the door here looks like it might be damaged as well. So something has definitely happened. You can also tell by a lot of the areas around the central dome. So like these pillars here. Um, you might be able to tell where my cursor is, but this pillar here. And some of the tiles around the bottom here as well are all very, very damaged as well. So something powerful has happened here. There's been some kind of big explosion, which is, I guess, what Pioneer 2 have picked up. Um, now, the question is, what has caused this explosion at this point? Rico theorizing that potentially one of the experiments they've been doing to adjust the environment has backfired. So that's our sort of leading theory at this point. So this message here, this... It's a little bit more of a game hint from Rico, but it gives you an idea of her mindset and how she operates as a hunter. So she says, tactics are important, but strategy is vital. You have to think about how you can put yourself into an advantageous situation. Look, learn, analyze, and judge. Think carefully. So you can see she's a very methodical hunter and she thinks about what she's doing. Um, and that is reflected in the fact that she is a celebrated hunter on Pioneer 1, and she's even known aboard Pioneer 2 as well. Um, if you ask some of the NPCs on board Pioneer 2, they'll mention about Red Wing Recall because they know her, because they know her exploits. So she's obviously this renowned hunter, and you can tell from that message that the way she thinks and the way she acts when she's out as a hunter, you can tell that she is quite skilled. So next up, we come to this pillar, and Recall leaves a message at each of these as well. I heard that this tall column was built to commemorate the immigration of Pioneer 1. It may just be me, but it doesn't look very new. And these patterns, aren't they characters? So Rico is obviously not convinced, so she's been told that these pillars were built to commemorate Pioneer 1 arriving on Ragol. But she's looked at this as a, you know, objectively, as a scientist, which Rico is. And she's looked at this and thought, this doesn't add up. This pillar looks a lot older than it they're saying it is. So there's already this sort of mistrust between Rico and the government. Um, are the government of Pioneer 1 really telling the truth to the citizens? Um, but she's not convinced at all that this was built to commemorate Pioneer 1. She thinks it's something else entirely. And she also thinks that she can read some kind of characters on the surface as well. Now, when you encounter this originally in PSO, it won't be glowing like this. This is just because I've activated it. Um, but in the older versions of the game, you will actually need to activate three of these pillars to actually unlock the final area. So make sure you do that if you go through. So you can tell there is already this sort of element of distrust between Rico and the, the government. And she's she's not really convinced that what she's being told is the actual truth. And as a scientist, she feels that it's her duty to go and investigate that and figure out what's actually going on. So once we get towards the end of um, Forest 2, there's another message from Rico here. Pioneer 1 may have damaged the ecological system of Ragol before we were aware of it. So, the native creatures tried to remove the invaders. That's one supposition, so she's still trying to figure out why the native creatures have become violent. But what about the explosion? I need more information. I have to go do some research. So she's she's trying to piece together and figure out why their monsters have become violent. And she's, she's got one theory now that she thinks that maybe... Pioneer 1 has damaged the ecological system of Ragol, and maybe the, the native creatures have sort of risen against it and tried to remove the, the settlers from Pioneer 1, which would make sense as to why they become aggressive. Well, that doesn't explain the explosion. So now she's kind of back to square one, so now she's thinking, well, maybe Pioneer 1 hasn't damaged the, the surface. You know, She's not really sure what's going on now, so she needs to go and do some more research to try and figure out another hypothesis. So once you get to here, just outside the central dome, you really get a sense of the amount of damage that this explosion's caused. You can see that all these pillars are massively cracked. All of the, the tiles on the floor are all shattered. Um, you know, there is quite a lot of damage to all the walls. So whatever caused this explosion, it was a really, really powerful explosion. 
And then as we come through here, so as we get to the actual, this is the entrance to the actual central dorm. And you can see you can't go in. And there's another message left here by Rico. No, it won't open. It might be easy to look for another way to get in. So whatever has caused this explosion has also ruined the door of the central dome, which makes it impossible to actually get in. But unfortunately, the only other way in is through this portal. And when you get to the underside of the dome, you get confronted by the first boss up here, so, which is the dragon. So again, there's this very violent side of Raggle that's coming out now. Um, this overwhelming sense of something about this planet that just doesn't add up. So interestingly, once you've defeated the dragon, you can get a good look around the, the interior of the central door. You can see that this door here on this side actually looks perfectly fine. There's no damage to it whatsoever. So whatever has damaged the central dome, it, it, it's looking like the explosion came from outside the dome rather than inside. Now that then raises questions about Rico's original hypothesis that maybe Pioneer 1 caused the explosion. Because if the explosion happened outside the central dome, that doesn't make sense. So now we're back to Pioneer 2. Um, what I wanted to do is just have a word with a few of the NPCs on Pioneer 2 as well, just because this gives you a good idea of what the, the populace on Pioneer 2 is feeling. Given that they've just heard that Pioneer 1's lost contact, they've just now heard that they're not going to be landing on Ragol to start settling straight away. That's all been delayed until we figure out what's actually going on. So there's this sense of like unease and nerves now among the population of Pioneer 2. So what should we do if Ragol isn't the place for us? We can't go back and we can't proceed. Where is home now? Have you found Rico yet? That unfortunate accident with Rico there. So again, you, you can tell that Rico is obviously very fondly thought of even on Pioneer 2. It's been rumoured that Rico left a lot of messages on Ragol. Her messages must be important clues that will help solve this mystery. So he's actually like, telling you, like, this is what you need to do to unlock the story. This random NPC on Pioneer 2. <laughs> so I think I'll end that one there for today. So we've, we've learned that something has happened on Ragol. We've learned that the, the animals originally weren't violent and they were quite placid and docile. Something has happened with it with an explosion. All of the animals have turned violent and all of Pioneer 1 have disappeared. But we don't know what's caused the explosion and we have no idea why the animals have turned violent in the first place. All we know is that Rico is obviously investigating it and she's leaving messages on her way to let anyone know who follows her what she's found so far. We've also found this mysterious pillar as well and we don't really know what that's for at this point either. So I hope you found this relatively interesting. In the next video we'll go down to the next area of Ragol and continue following Rico's messages and try and build a better picture of what actually happens on Ragol during the events of PSO. So as we can tell so far, there is something very ominous and something not right about this planet. And at the moment, we just have no idea what that actually is. Just that something has gone horribly wrong. So yeah, I'll end that there for today. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing or joining this member. We do two videos a week and we stream once on a, on a Sunday as well. We also have a Discord channel that you can join, which I'll leave the link for in the description. So yeah, um, next episode, we will go down to Caves and we'll pick up the story from there. So let's see you guys in the next one.